of uh, time schedule. And the next presentation will be given by Professor Mauri Metin. Uh, the title is uh, Deciphering Ice Induced Vibrations DIIV. Mauri, please. Thank you. This, uh, this project uh, was a joint operation with Norwegian University of Techno Science and Technology, Technical University of Delft, and HSBA. Uh, I was that time at uh, NTNU, and uh, we designed there a test setup for dynamic ice structure interaction measurements, uh, and made uh, design drawings. HSBA manufactured the parts and uh, did the installation for their test basin and the TU Delft uh, provided a new approach to get uh, special data out of these uh, tests. I'm going to talk shortly about background and uh, objectives, uh, describe the model structure, model eyes, what measurements we did, and what kind of data analysis uh, we have conducted this far. Ice induced vibration is a very strange phenomenon. I used the word capricious, and uh, it's so that you can't predict uh, exactly what will happen and to what way it will appear. And also, this uh, phenomenon has been known already from middle of the 1960s, and uh, still ice scientists have diverging explanations what is the reason for these severe induced vibrations. The most severe is frequency lock-in, and that's a real threat for offshore structures, as I will show shortly. Basically, there are three different ice load scenarios with um, slow ice velocity. There is so to like um, so to like a uh, ice load buildup, sudden ice failure, and then next load cycle, and so on. And also, the displacement of the structure will follow the same thing. So there is only, it's very easy to calculate and design structure for such a load. And then another, if ice velocity is high, then the ice load will be random, and also the response of the structure is random. And that's a piece of cake for today's analysis methods. But in BP, there is intermittent velocity range when the ice load failures occur at or close to the natural frequency of the structure. There comes this frequency lock-in. And actually, it is this uh, natural frequency of the structure that's guiding when the ice fails. And this causes a resonant type loading, which is uh, very dangerous for structures. I present a little uh, exper uh, experience all around the world starting from 1960s and ending up to uh, this uh, 20th century. Early Cook in the pl platforms were the first in 1965 when they exhibited ice-induced vibrations, and the research started by all companies that time to solve it. Some explanations were given, and uh, a very good start was achieved. Then at Bohaisi and 70s, they have many different structures, uh, thin relatively thin legs, multi legged and these structures have exhibited numerous uh, modes of ice-induced vibration, and there has been structural failures as well. Then this picture is the reason that uh, I started to make ice research. It was uh, these new steel lighthouses uh, that were built between Finland and Sweden to the Kemi, uh, city of Kemi railway, and both lighthouses failed during the first few months in the fall, December, January, when the ice started to move. It made the structures to vibrate in its uh, first natural mode or second natural mode. And um, I was asked by Finnish, Finnish border navigation to explain why this is happening, that these brand new, very strong steel lighthouses uh, shake like hell and uh, get into pieces. Helicopter platform has fallen down from here. Here is static cracks at this junction, and then the concrete routing having the 60-ton superstructure 
to the foundation, it has been completely uh, disappeared. So it tilted. Oh, in this lighthouse was uh, also severe vibrations, gas bottles uh, fell out and then ignited, there was explosion, the top exploded away. So it's rather violent re result that may occur. Then uh, this research by Finnish border navigation brought this uh, vibration isolated lighthouse where the, the superstructure is isolated from vibrations from the foundation. It solved the problem. Twelve such structures have been built in Finland and it's successful and they have been operations in 76 uh, or constructed in 76 and 91. So it works, but the structure is more complicated and more expensive. Then we have in Finland, Finland about 100 these types of uh, uh, edge markers for shipping channels. They are fixed at the bottom and when the ice moves, it makes them vibrate violently. And in this picture, you can see that acceleration level here at this level has been up to 10 G. And it's uh, plus minus 10 G, so it's quite severe vibration. And the top is moving 50 millimeters plus minus directions 4.6 times per second. So all the lanterns and um, delicate equipment here have been isolated also this by an inverted pendulum. And we have these quite many in operation. But then this capricious uh, nature of ice induced vibration, Kemi Lighthouse um, that is now made from concrete and uh, it's in the same location as the failed Kemi 1 steel lighthouse. It has been now 39 years and we have measured it uh, quite a long time but uh, no significant ice induced vibrations have been occurred, just some kind of indication, but nothing. But quite close to this lighthouse, there is in Sweden, Nordstromsund lighthouse, and it has had very severe vibrations. Frequency lock wind has sustained for long times, and concrete uh, that is reinforced with steel, the steel bars have been quite close to the yielding due to so severe vibration levels. These two lighthouses are almost identical in shape. This one is only about 16% taller, both water, le uh, water depth and uh, the top where the helicopter platform is. So what is the difference between those? No one has given a uh, final explanation for difference that one is vibrating, one is not. And this one that's vibrating, there is less severe ice conditions as with Kemi-1. Then there was a quite interesting case in Bohorci in 1986. This heavy uh, molic basculation that's uh, almost pure uh, concrete uh, steel caisson, and uh, it can hit uh, ice that's both first year and multi year, six meter or even higher. And when ice fails against this fail, uh, this uh, surface of the structure. This is about 100 meters this uh, direction. When there are ice failures at different locations, they are going most time randomly independent of each other. But at certain phase, these loads start to synchronize and they occur at the same time. And then it causes very severe load fluctuations and also this molecule was ready to walk away because this dynamic action made the pore pressure higher in the foundation and then when the pore pressure gets high enough then it's not having any shear capacity and this might have been starting to move. They were almost ready to evacuate the structure when the ice movement stopped and the structure was saved. Then lately in the 20th century in Sakhalin there are oil gas production platforms and these are very massive structures but the legs are vibrating it's uh, more a nuisance, not a, a structural safety issue, but it's still a little mystery how this happens. It has also vibration isolation system or earthquake isolation system that should also isolate ice induced vibrations, but it's not doing it. So full scale experience and has indicated that ice induced vibrations can occur in all kinds of conditions, uh, thin ice to thick ice, low to high ice velocities, slender and 
wide and multi leg structures and the frequency of in the most severe case. And uh, without adequate design for dynamic ice loads, adverse vibrations may occur. And to solve this problem, NTNU initiated this uh, HydroLab project to measure uh, by scale model tests uh, ice induced vibrations. So these tests were planned in a rather large, large scale, 1 to 8 to 1 to 10, part of the 7th program, HydroLab 4, and part of the 7th per, as stated earlier, and test was carried out in October 2011, and uh, now for three years the data analysis has been going on. We had uh, uh, very good instrumentation for these measurements uh, to find all the aspects out. We are planning to, we we are planning to model dynamic behavior similarly as it happens in nature, not with exact similar structures in, in nature, but a modal similitude so that natural modes behave like natural modes of a real structure to a certain scale ratio. And this model should be able to predict all these three different ice velocity dependent uh, ice uh, force and uh, response histories, also frequency lock in synchronization with mid wider multi leg structures, and fulfill also scaling laws. These uh, scaling laws, uh, I think I will skip these over because that's uh, more details. Uh, and uh, there were some new items that we were after to quantify the physical parameters that control these ice induced vibrations. This has not been done earlier so thoroughly as what we were uh, designing to do it. And also the energy flow between ice and structure. When you have a resonant type condition, it means that the ice is feeding in energy into the structure more than what's dissipated into ice crushing and uh, structural damping. So this energy input uh, into the structure and dissipation at various phases of uh, vibration is some kind of a solution, what's there happening. And also, what is the reason for this uh, spatial synchronization? So, we also this uh, DAPS contribution was to have their uh, forced sinusoidal movement addition that allows to solve the components of ice force that are both in phase uh, 90 degrees behind and 180 degrees. And these two latter present damping and mass. They are not physical, but they are apparent added mass and added damping. And um, these, uh, the structure what we planned was this kind of a beam that was fixed to the uh, HSPA Mainframe, it was having flexible uh, flat spring steels and the beam itself was bending and then we had different weights that we would tune the natural frequencies and uh, mode shapes and then we had different diameters at the ice crushing cylinder and also we had tactile sensor to measure pressure distribution there. Then the modes of uh, response with this structure are such that the first natural mode is like this both beam bending and these uh, uh, flexible steels uh, giving up, and then second mode, and they are quite distinct, good amplitude at water line, so that ice would be easy to excite these modes to alive. And then this Dutch thing, it was rigid body motion with sinusoidal movement at the ice action point. The model structure specifications can be found in the papers. And instrumentation was a little peculiar because we did not have any direct ice force measurement. And the reason is that there is no one has presented a reliable method to measure direct ice load. So we used indirect method. We had five different ways how to solve the ice load in the direction of ice movement. And uh, then we had also this tactile sensor as a sixth thing. So we needed dynamic calibration that tells what is the relation between load and response what the structure is 
representing. And this was done with a, a hand lever. We broke there at the Isaacson point a safety piece that broke suddenly, and then the structure was free to vibration, and we could measure the ratio of input load and the response of the structure. And then it needs some um, Fourier transforms and mathematics, but it's uh, quite simple with today's computers. We had a quite comprehensive test set up with different ice thicknesses, ice velocities, and structural configurations with natural motion, uh, uh, natural frequencies, and also these post uh, sinusoidal movement tests. Measure data indicated, unfortunately, only few cases where this frequency lock in was. Uh, taking place, and uh, here there should be more or less close to random response, and then it comes close to first mode uh, response, and in this case about 8.7 cycles per second. And in some case there was a subharmonic response uh, first mode, and then it suddenly get into the second mode frequency lock-in. And these are very good pieces for more uh, randomly oriented crystals at the top, and then it's changing to cylindrical crystals down there. So it's like sea ice normally. Only problem is that in scale model test, there is perhaps too low uh, dependence on ice uh, strength to uh, strain rate. And that's rather important in, in ice induced vibrations. So we got the ice velocity dependent crossing response, short duration frequency lock ins, and then this structure behaved as expected. It was easy to change configuration, and uh, partly the data was hardly difficult in the force movement test because there was a, a control slipping in the run. And, but it proved that negative mass and de negative damping exist. Data analysis has been used to find out these frequency response functions to solve the ice flow from different sources of response measurements. We presented waterfall presentation, how the response is taking place, found out frequency locking ranges, calculated true ice load and energy balance, and also these added damping, added mass cases. Okay. I come to conclusions. Well, the conclusion is that the, the tests gave us a lot of very useful data. It's hard to interpret, but there are two doctoral students uh, working on this thing, and first of these is expected, perhaps hopefully late in this year, and next one in 2015. And then we have one master thesis going on, now already two journal papers have been submitted and already eight conference papers. So that from these you can find more information. Some of the new data gives, uh, for instance, we can simulate by computer what's happening in the structure at the same time as there is a contact in the ice uh, acting the cylinder. And you can see that there is good correlation in some areas, but in some cases it drops when the ice failure proceeds. So that's a new data that has never been produced. And these correlation maps have been produced from one sector of the cylinder to another. Good correlation and low color correlation. So these tests have been done, and uh, there is still a lot of possibilities to find out uh, new results, new findings from the measurement results, and this work is going on and you will hear it in conferences in future one to three years further. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have time for one short question. Yeah, I was just uh, wondering, from the just vi visual recording, could you say this was uh, the frequency lock in, or it was intermediate crashing, or not? Or it all looks the same, just visual?
Jesus alone as their leader. And that's what drove him. 